Greetings. All right, so I'm excited to use this new deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap in and see what are the general messages or guidances, whatever divine spirit plans are coming through. Holy Spirit, I cast on any divine guidance and divine imagination for any high thing that has a small this topic of knowledge and wisdom of you. What is your guidance? Holy Spirit, what is your message? Things are about to change quickly, rapidly, and you've been healing, someone's been cutting some things loose, starting to feel more free, more lighter in your energy. Um, for some of you, it could be like, you recently cut ties from something, I feel like, or you're still healing, you're in the process of cutting this off, um, something painful. For some of you, it could be something with the inner child, because I do see that with the Six of Cups. It's like making peace with something from your inner child that could have kept you restricted, kept you stuck. For some of you, um, I'm hearing 8 to 15 years old. It could have been something very significant in that time of your life. Your energy is very different. It's like you're closing out a major chapter in your life. It's something that is, this is something that could have been like a 20 year cycle. I'm hearing 20 years, a 20 year cycle. And you might be a little bit hesitant or a little afraid to embark on this. You wanna make sure that what you're seeing is factual with the six of wands, like I feel like you're moving into a very triumphant time, especially with the world and the six of wands. You could be getting some sort of recognition or people see this change. They see the shift. You're not playing no games. You're not you're not leaving anything untouched. You're you're cutting off what needs to be cut off. No questions asked. Her hair is so cute. It's like this cute little pixie. It's so cute. Yeah, Will of Fortune. Things are shifting. They are shifting for the better. I feel like things are divinely right on schedule. You're being divinely protected. Nothing can penetrate your energy. Nobody or nothing can penetrate you. Even if they tried, you know, to try to burst your bubble, try to get in, take your focus away. Um, no, they can't. They can't do it. You're being divinely protected. And I feel that there's something here that is supposed to come to pass here it might be different for each and every one of you let me see you have something major coming in for some of you nine of pentacles you guys could be coming into some type of financial blessing soon or something your fruits of your labor paying off your investments are paying off. You invested wisely. Um, make sure that you guys are listening to divine guidance and instructions that you're receiving. You know, honoring the divine nudges that you feel, the things that you're being guided to do, say, whatever. Knight of Cups. I do feel like love is coming in for some of you as well. I did sense that. There's somebody that... There's somebody with this Knight of Cups that is willing to take a chance on you, even if they're afraid or they feel like they're not completely equipped to be in a relationship or to approach you. They feel that pull. So that pull and that vulnerability and that trust is, is courageous in spite of feeling like they're inexperienced or they're not ready. And this could be your approach with love or approach to something you love that you want to do. The hermit, dang, wow, you got the hermit, the sun, and the death card, like these majors, three majors that came out, so we are in the season of Scorpio as I'm recording this, the death card is the Scorpio energy, um, this could be in the pursuit of something, this Knight of Cups energy can be you in the pursuit of something 
that resonates with your soul, that makes your inner child leap, your purpose leap inside of you, that joy. And that could be what's leading to this massive change and transformation where you know like certain things can't stay. Like you're determined, you're you know that you're destined for greatness, or you're determined to see or live out your purpose. Or your destiny, I'm hearing. Your divine fate or destiny. Page of Swords. Yeah, so you're also working on renewing your mind. You're not taking any ish, but I feel like you're, you want to have a lighter approach or mindset about what you're doing. You know, because you know that you have the ability to maybe get in your ego sometimes. Um, you might be a bit of a skeptic when it comes to change or this new change, this new energy that's coming in. What's this energy? What's this energy? Holy Spirit, what is this energy? Okay, we're only going to take the ones that flipped upwards. So I'll put these back. So you have gratitude synchronicity and curiosity so yeah um excuse me i feel like spirit is saying like right now um you're getting sneak peeks into what's to come and spirit is revealing to you through confirmations through divine signs and miracles and synchronicities um anyhow like what's to come and windows for me on a prophetic level like that is a symbol of what's to come it's a sneak peek it's a glimpse it is an insight into something and the fact that you have this that rainbow that's a promise that's a blessing that is a sign of a promise between you and spirit that cannot be broken the sun that's rising out of the clouds that can also represent something coming. You also have the sun card. Something coming. A new beginning. Can represent the presence of the divine. Positive light. A breakthrough that's coming. And I feel like you, you're you going to start to see a shift or change. Synchronicity may be surrounding. Change is coming for you. You might get a lot of divine confirmation that a change is coming. Or... Maybe you know what some of these changes are or that you're being guided to make some changes. So this death card can definitely promote this. It might be a bit um, challenging to certain things for you. Like in certain ways, differently for each and every one of you, it could be a bit challenging, whatever this change is. But it's inevitable and it's challenging certain fixed beliefs, things that you held, held on religiously. Spirit saying, I got to break the routine. I got to break whatever it is that you're putting in on a pedestal that is not in alignment with you something you're showing reverence to that may not be divinely um meant for you or purposeful in your life so your hard work and your hard efforts in so many ways the energy that you put forth that you give out that you give back your time that you spent um purposefully going within um, in solitude, like a purposeful solitude or time alone, hermit mode, seeking your wit, like what's best for you, going within, meditating, releasing, surrendering, healing, cutting cords, learning new things, taking the initiative towards things, being assertive, taking leaps of faith. This is all being rewarded in some form or capacity. Okay. Gratitude is the key gratitude for spirit even showing you the glimpses because sometimes we can be tormented by seeing things in the future like when spirit gives us a premonition or a prophecy we get upset and we're like oh well why oh why would spirit do that or why would god do that why would my ancestors why would my angels whatever we complain right just complaining and murmuring right but rather than looking at it as a blessing like spirit trusts me enough or knows that i'm equipped enough to handle that information and see it as preparation like it's a sneak peek so I can get prepared I can get ready or I can you know seek divine guidance okay well I know that now that I see that okay what do I need to do and like get excited right like I remember and sometimes like it gets 
it gets a little trying because and maybe you're used to the disappointments or getting your hopes up or thinking that things but know that some blessings and some manifestations some prophecies some premonitions and visions from the divine it takes time before it comes to pass it's not going to happen immediately some things may not even come to pass until like years later um I think I shared this in a video like a few months ago where I was watching like how Walt Disney deals, um, how Walt Disney built and designed certain rides or whatever at Disneyland. And one of them was one of my favorite rides still to this day, Space Mountain. That was a vision that he had um, before he passed and he didn't, he wasn't able to fully complete it if I'm not mistaken. He, he died before the ride ever became an actual physical thing. And they went back to the ride, like, years later, they went back and went back into the design and, like, how they wanted to do it. And the technology at the time wouldn't even be available at the time that they initially thought about building Space Mountain. What is Space Mountain today? So that didn't manifest until, like, years later. So, again, like, the things that we pray for and ask for, it takes time. And there might have been a time where you had that childlike optimism and faith where you believed in certain things that you, you know, wanted to create for yourself or come to pass. There was a time where I was so excited. I remember I was wanting to manifest something to happen in my life. I was so excited about it. And I would put all this energy and I believed it. Like you couldn't tell me like I was because that was my first time really learning what law of attraction really was. Like we we can realize or we might not realize that we do certain things um like that's what it is like you know when you're just doing it and you've never heard of the concept or what it even means to do that so when you learn like oh, okay that's what I'm doing okay and then you start really implementing that and it's an excitement behind it it's a wondrous energy behind it right but over time, that magic starts to dwindle because we start to settle into the disappointments of what didn't happen and it's taking long and you lose that zeal, that inner childlike faith when it comes to the seeds that spirit is planted in your heart to ultimately, truly, you know, these things, what spirit wants for you. There's a separation, there's a difference between a divine goal, dream, um, desire versus the ego's desires you know the lower vibrational desires or misleading things that are not really meant for you right and that's where you find that you're pressing and you're trying to force something to manifest and it's in vain because it's not truly what was ever aligned in the first place anyhow right but when it comes to divine desires i said this in another video it will feel like spirit wants this more than you it will feel like spirit is, God is like placing you in these positions to bring to pass and it will flow naturally. There's no resistance. There's no push and pull. There's no, you know, one-sided energy. It's like everything, people in physical time and in the spirit realm, it's like, all oh, back this up and people in your physical reality you'll have people that will support this and of course you'll have people that may not see the vision or may not be meant to help you but you'll notice that it's like things happen like whenever I was manifesting some something that was meant to come to pass whether it was something that was meant to stick or it was just something I was meant to experience for whatever reason it seems like everything even when there's a little bit of hiccups here and there miracles start to take place and doors open and things happen just crazy like that you couldn't make up that will place you in the positions where you need to be and that's how you know it's divine it's not there's no question in it you know when we try to make things happen out of divine time out of divine order and alignment or just simply making trying to make something happen that's not meant it's a lot of force behind it. It does not flow. The doors stay closed. Or they, they close on you. There's no flow behind it. There's no divine support backing it. That's how you know, right? So, I feel like Spirit is going to send you some confirmation or continue to show you and reveal to you the changes. So, in the meantime, what can you do? Of course, stay in gratitude. Pay attention to the synchronicities. 
you know, the things that spirit is showing. You could ask spirit, can you please, you know, show me? I'm curious, like, what am I supposed to be doing? What do I, like, help me? Dang. Okay. Mirrors go out. Actually, I'm not going to use these. Let me use... Uh, I'm going to use the Sword of Light. Holy Spirit, Divine Spirit, this message, if this is divine, approved, in fact, for those who this is meant to resonate with, what is their guidance? What should they do in the meantime? Like, what is going to be helpful for them at this time? Okay, take control of your thoughts, number 31, okay? Your thoughts are creating your reality. Have faith and stay focused on the outcome that you truly desire. So it's kind of that key to manifestation, but that thing that is planted inside of you. And this is why I feel like the Seven of Cups is like, you want to make sure that you're seeing things as they truly are. You're mastering your mind. Number 31, essentially, it could be a 13, like the death card. You could flip that 31 into a 13. So the death to maybe certain thoughts that don't serve you, right? Or that blocks the flow of this divine manifestation of this outcome. You have 38 at the top of the deck. Yes, you are correct. It says you have listened to your inner guidance and made a wise choice. Keep moving forward. So trust that you've made the right decisions thus far. Be the light to others, number four. Look, I can't make this up. You have someone new is coming. Number 28. Says an important new relationship is on the horizon. Open your mind and heart so that happiness can enter your life. So for some of you, that is the message. The Knight of Cups that came out. But the be a light to others. It says you have a powerful message to share. Shine your light on the world so that others can learn from you. This can also, like I said, this could be connected to your purpose. Like I said, something about getting recognition. I would even say... All these cards can denote public recognition and support. I did a reading the other night for one of my beloved, <laughs> one of my beloved tarot sisters. Um, I wouldn't even want, I'm not even going to put her in the box. Um, but she's, she is a fellow um, intuitive as well and a gift. She... Um, I had gave her a reading publicly it was a, a happy hour reading and the message that came out and this, I sat with this energy before I even did the reading. It was ironically that same day where this message, similar message came to me where I was asking spirit, like what I really wanted to tap into the real essence of what favor really means and represents and in God's eyes, what is divine favor really truly mean? And favor is not like favor like you can just keep coming to god and be like hey can you front me 20 bucks like that's not a favor like favor is like where spirit is you know i'm going to do things for you i'm going to put you in positions and places make ways for you where you can thrive and be successful because you know you're coming you're you know you are on my team you represent me and i trust you enough that i'm going to place you in these positions not for your glory and for you to you know to take the credit but for uh, from a position of i trust you with what i've in, i've instilled in you what i've given you your gifts your talents your purpose your service your you know here on this light your light in this life your contribution to this world I trust you to put you here and I'm going to place you in these positions because you're representing me and what you're bringing is meant to cause a shift and change. It elevates the kingdom, right? The divine kingdom, God's kingdom, right? So that light work that you're doing, that success and that recognition, your divine favor is on you because you represent the, the most high. You are set apart because you represent the divine source of all things. You're not coming from a place of ego. It's not about you. You're not coming from a place to destroy and hurt others or 
Um, you're coming to share yourself. And sometimes to others, it could look like you, you're cocky, you think you're all that. But there's this thing that people have where when someone is in their divinity, they're shining their light. And it's not a boisterous energy. It's you showing up, you celebrating yourself, you loving and honoring yourself in all ways. You're not hiding yourself. And sometimes spirit will call for you to be hidden to further protect you or to cultivate you in the middle of your process. But when it's time for you to step out, spirit's light and, and divinity and favor is upon you. But the thing that we don't see is that it's not about the person, but it's the light inside of them and what motivates them that's different. Is your light an inspiration to others or are you making it all about you? Is your premise and purpose also to give back, you know, that's the biggest thing as well. And I feel like there's a, a spiritual support and backing that is protecting you through this process because I do feel that there will be some evil eye, but it's not going to penetrate your energy. It cannot penetrate you because this is spirits doing. Other people, spiritual immaturity doesn't understand that it, when we get in our, in our ego sometimes, right, or we get in our, like, that place where we're kind of like low and we feel like down or insecurity we'll project onto others and we'll see certain things and we'll just assume that oh that person has it easy why then why not me or why everybody else and why not me or they don't deserve it or who do they think they are and a lot of times it's none of our business because we really don't know if it's even a divine blessing in the first place to be coveting and if it is a divine blessing you shouldn't be coveting that because spirit gave it to that person so who are you to dictate and say they should have this or why are they doing this and oh they think they don't like that's that's not going to get you anywhere because a spiritual mature person knows that their path is their own and they have their own blessings and gifts and talents and their own journey and path and it's not going to look tailored exactly like the next person next to them or the person from afar that's why you got to focus on your own paper and look at your own plate and not someone else's. You're doing yourself a great disservice by doing that because you're called to your own thing, but you're so worried about what everybody else is doing or you feel like, okay, well, if it worked for them, why can't it work for me? And, and I've been there and done that. And you got to get to a point where you know your value in the eyes of your creator.